This is particularly important in this non-radar equipped fighter. Training must substitute for technology in the demanding workload that low-level attack operations generate. Close formation skills are utilized to get the aircraft through any form of weather. Once conditions allow, the formation will widen into battle positions, allowing for good crossover and mutual support. Sortie planning and execution must be exact to avoid contravening the myriad of limitations that are placed on low-level flying. 41 Fighter Squadron's low-level training falls into two roles, tactical reconnaissance and offensive support. It is the only single-seat squadron to be declared with this dual capability. To maintain weapon proficiency, the Jaguars use weapon training ranges on the East Coast, notably Hull Beach and Donna Nook. These are remote areas with a variety of target arrays and the ability to provide accurate scoring following each pass. The squadron's pilots remain current at both low-level and medium-level attack profiles using practice weapons. The majority of attack sorties also include an off-range target. This can be a suitable and realistic installation anywhere in the United Kingdom's low-flying system and allows pilots to become familiar with the difficulties of finding targets whilst operating at low level. Low-level tactics remain important and are the bread and butter of the Royal Air Force's offensive fast jet community. Medium-level sorties can only be flown with considerable and costly electronic warfare support, a capability that can only be provided by the United States. It is important to maintain our level of proficiency in flying very low and fast in a hostile environment. If we can train for the worst case, then any other will be well within our capabilities. On its return to base, the aircraft is received by the ground crew, who are in communication with the pilot to ensure the shutdown runs smoothly. With engines off, all blanks and safety devices are placed back on the aircraft. Should the low-level recce pod have been used, the film will immediately be taken to the Reconnaissance Intelligence Center, or RIC, as it is more commonly known for processing. The RIC is a self-contained unit within the squadron, and is responsible for the processing and exploitation of all photographic imagery gathered by the aircraft. The resulting intelligence is required by commanders in the field, and it is important that it is as current as possible. Engineering is another important part of the support element of 41 Fighter Squadron. This includes both first-line servicing and second-line maintenance and rectification of faults, often requiring the engineers to work around the clock to achieve a serviceable fleet for the next day. They are highly trained and have all the facilities to quickly diagnose and rectify faults in their particular specialization. The pilot on 41 Fighter Squadron is a highly trained professional. He relies on regular ground-based training to complement flying experience. As part of this training, the pilots fly the simulator at regular intervals. This training facility is fully modernized and provides a realistic environment where the pilot can practice dealing with emergency situations without risking the potential consequences. A realistic scale model of a typical training area is used to represent the ground the pilot is flying over and includes several targets to allow weapon selection skills to be practiced. A small CCTV camera flies over the model and in response to control movements produces a cockpit view. 41 Fighter Squadron is a mobile frontline unit in the Royal Air Force and has to have the capability to support two detachments in two different locations at any time. Therefore, the squadron is flexible and can deploy anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. It can be operational in theatre within three days of getting the order to go, with its aircraft loaded with ordnance and ready to carry out missions. 
to achieve this capability, all the equipment has to be deployable by air or road. Much of the support equipment can be loaded into the back of a Hercules and move rapidly anywhere in the world. A fleet of about five Hercules can carry all the equipment and personnel necessary for a sustained operation. Whilst the Hercules has an intercontinental range, the Jaguar requires in-flight refueling to travel long distances, and the squadron's aircraft are regularly supported by the VC-10 or TriStar tanker fleet, who often accompany the squadron on major deployments. Air-to-air -air refueling is the art of making the seemingly impossible look routine. Operations in the UK include moving large convoys of vehicle by road. The RIC can deploy as a totally independent unit, and in June 1995, they deployed 12 cabins by road to RAF Lossiemouth. This was in addition to the engineering support, which carried out the same 500-mile journey. All equipment arrived at Lossiemouth on time and serviceable. The detachment to Lossiemouth named...